Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm gonna to answer a question that a subscriber had. So I'll load up on the screen here the actual question, but I'm going off memory here. Basically, they wanted to know, Dimitri, why is NYU not on the fancy quant honorable mentions list to be reviewed? Okay, and they mentioned in there as well, I believe, that, you know, Dimitri, you know Pierre Carr, obviously, you had an interview with him. Um, so basically, why is he not on the list? So let me debunk this on many different aspects and explain why I did not add them to the list to be reviewed in the first year of the Fancy Quant Honorable Mentions Master's Program list year. So uh, first off, just because I know somebody does not mean they will make the list. Okay, I'm just putting that out there here. So I know a few directors at a few different programs. Um, many of them are not on the list. So just because you know me, just because you've interviewed with me, does not mean that you're going to make the list, okay? Now, let me make blatantly obvious and clear here, as clear as I can make it, the reason NYU is not on the list has nothing to do with the quality of the program. Um, so one of these is going to be avoiding this conflict of interest somewhat that everyone's kind of bringing up already, right? Dimitri, you know them, they should be on the list. Um, so I'm getting some negative feedback and criticism, seems like from some programs who have asked to be on the list, that basically, you know, they don't want me to rank them, they think I'm going to be biased. Um, and so I'm taking criticism, which I expect from making this ranking, uh, because also I am criticizing the other, you know, Quantnet and Risk.net's rankings and me by going out there and criticizing them and saying they can improve them. Um, at the same time, right, they're gonna come back at me and other programs that are highly ranked on those lists. If they don't make the cut, they're gonna be aggressive and somewhat mad and upset that I'm not ranking them on my list. Um, so to avoid that bias here, I have that's one reason I've chosen not to have NYU on the list. Uh, the second reason though is probably more so why I didn't have them. Uh, the second reason is going to be NYU's program is far more complex to rank than other programs, at least in my opinion. Uh, the reason for this. So I don't like the ranking systems. I don't like that they have you know job placement, tuition amount, uh, I don't know, so just like really easy, simple stats, summary stats here on the programs and they use that to rank students. Um, I'm going to be diving down into the textbooks they use, how many chapters they cover, um, a bunch of other questions from the, any like feedback from the students, for example, I need a lot of information. Well, NYU is known for having a bunch of industry practitioners as professors for the program. So doing this a first year, right, I'm trying to get a solid kind of rundown, going through the questions, reviewing programs, trying to work the ins and outs of how I'm going to do this, right? Now, NYU's program, I don't know, I haven't asked, but if you're an industry practitioner, you're probably going to have better quality teaching than somebody who's an academic professor who's never worked in the industry. Uh, so I can tell you from my experience, going to the University of Michigan, we had industry practitioners and a few of them didn't even have textbooks, they just taught purely from experience. Um, they layered in texts and references and things, but a lot of it was really I guess in-depth knowledge that you're just not going to get in a textbook. So industry practitioners. Now, how do I rank a program like NYU against everybody else's? Um, I'm gonna have to figure that out, right? But for the first run, the first year, I'm looking to rank programs that just seem a little more cut and dry, a little easier to rank. Uh, NYU, I'm not saying it's a bad program. I think it's actually a fairly good program and I'll explain why here in a second. Uh, I think it's a pretty good program. They have a lot of advantages and because of that, it's going to make it challenging to review them. There are other programs that are very easy to review. They're purely academic programs. Um, so that's kind of the second reason here. Uh, the third reason here too is that I'm actually looking for Peter Carr's feedback probably in the future as well as other individuals. So I kind of bounce ideas off different people. Um, now, if he's going to be reviewed and ranked this first year, so I'm trying to get kind of a grasp of what's going on here and I really value uh, Peter's feedback and his insight, right? We had a discussion. I didn't agree on every point, which is completely fine on how programs are ranked or not ranked or whatever, uh, but I actually value his feedback. So he runs a good program, he has great practitioners in the program, uh, they've done amazing things with their program. Uh, I actually value his feedback because he was an industry practitioner as well as actually running these, you know, NYU's program here. And so at the same time, right, I don't wanna rank them in the first year and then say, hey, do you have feedback? And if they either did or didn't make the list, I don't want that to be a bias component either. Okay, now all of that being said, NYU did mention that they would provide data to me if I ever asked them to join any sort of ranking or review here, okay? So this is a really, really good sign for a program. And I'm starting to realize this now, I didn't realize it before. 
Um, so I've sent out notices to a bunch of different universities, uh, invitations. I am not going to disclose on the final list who either submitted data and didn't make it or just refused to provide information. Uh, the reason for this is I don't want to essentially blackball schools or go out and say a school is bad or nasty or anything like that. Um, right, so a really good program might choose not to be ranked. It's possible. Uh, a program might be ranked and not make my cut, but I'm also not going to go out and try to punish people for being invited and then not being reviewed on this. So I'm not going to release that information. Now, that being said, for me, it seems like a really big red flag when programs are emailing me saying, thank you for sending it out. However, we don't want to be ranked. We don't want to be involved. Um, so somewhat kind of interesting here from this aspect is that some of these top programs that are in the rankings, a lot of them are like, Dimitri, we'd love to be ranked. We'll have all the information to you by August, right? They're happy. They're excited. They're confident about their program. They're confident about what they're teaching. They're confident about job placement, right? They don't have anything to fear. They don't seem like it. Other programs are very odd and very catty in a way that they're kind of like, some programs wanted me to provide them the exact scoring equations, the exact everything. Like I already gave them all the questions they could have reviewed, and yet they wanted exact scoring equations. Why? Because a lot of these programs want to go in and rank themselves using my criteria and then say, oh, we'll make the cut or we won't make the cut. And if we won't make the cut, we're not going to be reviewed. Um, I'm not happy about how this is being done by a lot of schools, the fact that you don't want to participate. Um, I think it's going to be clear, though, as the rankings go on over multiple years, so we won't see it the first year, but I think it's going to be clear that a lot of the international programs aren't being ranked by a lot of the ranking platforms because they don't want to play ball. So they know they're not going to have good job placement. They know they're not placing actual quants because guess what? There's not many quant jobs in all these other countries here. So it does put them at a disadvantage. Now, my ranking is going to cater towards academics and good education, which you can see in the, the questions I've provided to them. Uh, but it seems kind of odd that they're being catty and they're kind of like avoiding being ranked unless they're going to get ranked well. Um, these are kind of throwing up red flags here. So pointing this out for NYU, the fact that they really wanted to provide information before I even mentioned the quant rankings, right, before all this, this whole thing's gone on. Uh, beforehand, they mentioned, you know, if you end up having some sort of ranking, they'd be happy to provide data and to participate uh, in the ranking. So I think that's a good sign as well. So I'm hoping you guys get the takeaway from this video, right? NYU, I think is a pretty good program. Again, I don't have all the nitty gritty details of all the pieces and all that, but at the end of the day, I'm not adding them to the list the first year, not because the program's not good. Uh, it just has to do with conflicts of interest, uh, getting feedback, you know, from their program as well on the rankings and how it's being put together from Peter Carr, um, as well as the fact that I think their program is just going to be more challenging to rank. Um, I'm also keeping in my mind though this year as the rankings come out and as the information comes in, uh, how am I going to rank programs that might not have a specific textbook? Um, but again, they're going to have to provide some sort of topics covered and trying to judge that. Um, it's going to be challenging. So anyways, that's the reason NYU is not in the invitational list this year. I would expect to see them in year two as an invitation, um, but it's not, it has nothing to do with the fact of the quality of the program or anything. It really just comes down to personal relationships as well as ranking ability, how challenging it will be on me given my limited time that I have. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.